Alright, hey guys, welcome to GUI tutorial number 11. And in this um, tutorial, we are going to make a uh, essentially a mouse mover um, program that the computer is actually going to take control of your mouse and move it in random directions and the user is going to be able to specify how many times they want to move it and the delay between the movements in addition to their screen width and screen height in pixels which is going to help uh, the program run correctly so alright got your imports down here close the nose extends JFrame remember that and then you got your variables so let's see we're gonna need about four labels I think so All right, and we're gonna need four text fields. Text field one, text field two, text field three, text field four, and we need one button. It's a J button, and that's it. I think yeah. All right, that's good. And then let's see, mouse public mouse move. Well, I can't type mouse mover. All right, now the first part of this program is fairly straightforward, but the second part you need to pay attention because it is very complicated and you, you might get lost if you don't pay attention closely. So I'll go th really slow through there. This is probably gonna be a multi-part uh, tutorial. So, anyways, we need to set layout new grid layout. And then we're gonna have four parameters this time. We're gonna have five uh, rows, two columns, and then these last two are for padding, which is basically extra space around them to make it look neater. So five, five. That's just uh, horizontal padding and vertical padding. So, so the first thing we need is we need a label. So label one, label eh, okay. Label one is equal to new J label. And then we're gonna s tell them to um enter number of movements and then add label one and now since this is laid out in uh rows and columns there's only two columns so right after this we want our text field and then after that's gonna go to a new line and or a new row I guess you call it so text field one is equal to new j text field and then we're not actually going to give it any um, parameters because it won't. The parameters won't mean anything because it'll just it'll de the grid will determine its width. So you'll see when it launches. All right, now we go. Um, let's see here. Label two. And then we're going to uh, tell them, prompt them to say, enter delay between movements. And then um, add text field. No, not text field. <laughs> label to. And then t scroll this up. Text field 2 is equal to new j text field. Enter. Oh no. Man, what am I thinking? <sighs> Alright, empty parameters. And semicolon add text field 2 alright now we have to tell them to enter their uh, screen width and screen height so the program can run efficiently so label 3 is equal to new j label enter screen width in pixels alright And text field three new. Huh. All right, and then finally our label four is going to be equal to new J label, and then we're going to tell them to enter screen. You guessed it. 
height in pixels and then add label 4 and then text field 4 alright now oh I almost forgot we actually need one more label and I'm gonna call it uh, I'm actually gonna call it error label and you'll see why I call it that in a little bit um, now we're in the last row so we're gonna have a button here and we're gonna put button is equal to new j button and it's gonna say start and then add button and then we're gonna have our error label and initially it's going to be empty so to do that you just type in uh, double quotes without anything in them and then huh yeah, can't type alright and that's it for the layout actually so now we'll go uh, let's see we gotta do a couple more things to the constructor before we can go to the action perform method so event e equals new event and we're just declaring an event class that we're about to create and then button add an action listener and give it the e parameter so now go out of your constructor down a couple and go let's see public class event implements action listener and you should know what we're doing right here because I've gone over this before and then public void action perform formed action and e e e well <coughs> alright so this is where things get uh, pretty confusing. I mean, I'm sure you can understand it, but basically we're going to have two try-catch blocks, one if-else statement, um, we're going to declare declare four int variables, and we're going to uh, cast them to integer, and we're going to actually have the robot uh, do his thing, I guess. <laughs> Oh, and we have to also make a new robot object. So we gotta do all that in this uh, action perform method. So I think I'll get started a little bit, and then we'll go to the next. So first thing you gotta do is a try block, and you're, you'll see why I do this try block later. It's to catch an error in case someone types in like the letter A or the letter B or something into the text field. It's gonna say please enter your numbers only into the error label that's why we created that error label anyways now um, we're gonna create the four integers and then I'm gonna go to the next tutorial or the next video so int num and that's basically the number of times it's gonna move is equal to type cast, uh, casted int and double dot parse double text field one text field Oh, uh, what the heck? Parse double text field. Uh, hold on. Why is this not working? Double dot parse double text. Oh, no, the I called it text field one with a tf one. Jeez. <laughs> and then um, get text. There we go. Duh. Alright. Now we're gonna go int delay is equal to int and then go outside double dot parse double text field two dot get text and just keep doing that for all of them. So I'm just gonna copy and paste. So now we're gonna do int uh width is equal to int and then that's gonna be text field three and int height and that's equal to text field four. And all right, I'm gonna end this one here and go on to the next one. So, tune in. It's gonna be called GUI Tutorial 12.